there's, uh, and, and these people I also call it disciples. Uh, there is a third rung, which is the church, community builders, which is not just about someone who subscribes to the opinion and not just about someone who's a leader in the organization, mm -hmm. but someone who uh, hears from God uh, calling and a vision their own that they will then need to publish and build an enterprise around and produce a brand and a market around which is wholly separate from anything else that they've ever heard. These people are evangelists. These people are the woman at the well who not only hears and reforms her own thing, but she goes back to where she's from and begins talking about a man who's shown her how she can live differently than she's ever lived before and becomes a call, a, a beacon or a, a agent, not of my business or my company or my vision, but one that God has given her that, that is Woman of Samaria Incorporated. Mm -hmm. That's community builders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are, these are three different rungs, three mm -hmm. different populations, three different purposes, all in the same, all down, going further and further down the rabbit hole. So, the mission has to come, I, I, and, I, and it may, there's probably ways in which I've said what a mission of each of the three could be, but the mission is directly... I can't say. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hmm. Do you want a vision for Transmedia 3 Inc. or for each entity? We can start with uh, Transmedia 3 Inc. Uh, because that is the entire thing. So it should sound something like uh, um, there is a way that Jesus allowed, if you think about the people he ran into in his three years, he allowed the person he ran into to set the goal, the mission, or the agenda for the exchange. Mm -hmm. He never, never, ever tried to sell a vision or a purpose or an idea to who he met. He always presented himself in some way that allowed them to make a choice as to A, if they wanted to go down the rabbit hole at all, B, how far they wanted to go. So we've got different people. We've got the rich young ruler mm -hmm. who ends up turning and walking away. Mm -hmm. We've got someone like the disciples who follow him around. Mm -hmm. And then you've got someone like Peter mm -hmm. who recreate themselves. Right. So those are three different lungs. So the mission of CM Inc. is to make a presentation of this concept of leaving the matrix yep. in a way that allows the person who hears it to choose a whether they want to entertain it at all come out of this uh, system and b if so how far down the rabbit hole they want to go. It's going to be an angel of change. Yeah, right. They're basically meeting people at their level of Okay. Right. But not just meeting them. It's not just the meeting. It's a presentation. It's like a pitch. It's like um, if you've written this uh, book or this play, and there's someone at a studio who can green light it, you don't just go meet the studio executive. You pitch. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's a perfect, it's a purposed pitch. Right. There are situations that are designed and engineered and a lot of in intentionality so that when people walk in the door, they're getting the sense that somebody's offering me something. Sure. You know what I mean? Right. So okay. for me, when I watch WGBH, mm -hmm. or when I listen to mm -hmm. it on the radio station, I'm very clear that there's a group, there's a consciousness, there is a community of people who care about something passionately. That even as I listen to this one particular program, I'm not just invited to pay attention to this issue. I'm reminded that this issue was produced by a community of people. Oh yeah. Who you know what I mean? Oh yeah. And that's, that's how they roll. And, and that's that's how I've got to roll. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. Yeah. That is how they roll. 
having worked with them for seven years, that's how they roll. And so that's why I said it's not just a meeting. They're not, see, ABC to me doesn't do that. Mm hmm. Right. ABC is entertaining. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But PBS mm -hmm. is not entertaining. They tell, this program was produced by viewers like you. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. They're telling you there's a community of people who feel you. Mm hmm. And watching this network brings you in. You could be living in. Hold up, Arizona. Mm -hmm. But when you watch this show, you are connected to people all around the world who are just like you. Mm -hmm. And they don't say who you are. They just say they're just like you. Yeah. Right. And there's something about that presentation and that pitch that doesn't just present or doesn't just offer or doesn't just entertain. It invites. It calls. It beckons. Sure. And if you're, in a, if you're in a state where you're looking for a community and you watch public television, it's really hard once you started watching a program to turn to another channel. It is. Because they, they're feeding you and they're nourishing you. And it's like before you know it, you're watching Nova. And then it's like uh, something about Africa. And then it's like, you know what I mean? Yes. They suck you in. And yeah. it's like before you know it, it's like four hours later. Yeah, you're right. You, you might need to go pick a book off the shelf or take a moment, drink some water, and just relax. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're different now having been exposed to the mission media of that company. Right. Well, let me jump in because I, I got a couple of thoughts. I don't know where you want us to, how you want us to, okay. First thing that comes to mind is this whole idea of the creative class. And Charles and I talked about this a year and a half ago. There's a book called The Rise of the Creative Class, mm -hmm. which talks about certain cities um, that attract creative people. Boston is number three on the list. Austin, Texas is number one. Seattle, Washington is number two. And then, you know, uh, places like... Uh, Washington, uh, other parts of Washington go down the, the, the numbers. Um, Washington, D.C. is in there. But pretty much the creative class are, they're, they're a group of people, if you will, there's 87 million of them. 37, 34 million um, in the United States. And what they do is they get paid to think. They get paid for their creativity. They're not the service class. They're not the, the working class. The people who sit behind a desk all day who just push papers. They're not those people. They are the people who facilitate, like what you're doing now, um, who, uh, who create, who, who imagine, who innovate, right? So the creative class, uh, 38 million. That's what it is. That's actually the number, 38 million. Um, and the thing that, that I'm struck by is that we are living in, we're living in a city that is number three on this list. Now, Richard Florida, the guy who wrote the book, mm -hmm. came up with um, a way of measuring all of these people and figuring all this out. He was at um, Carnegie Mellon. He uh, started looking at migration patterns of creative people. Where were they going? Why were they going there? And he found that creative people and also homosexuals, which is interesting, had some of the same migration patterns. And they were going to places that were robust, like had a lot of resources, right? Um, and if you look back, if you go back in time to the Renaissance period, you look at Florence and places like that, same kind of energy you had these really robust centers where a lot was happening. And people were attracted to go to those places to work, to create, to be to be innovative, to, to, to make things happen that could change the world. That was the Renaissance period, right? 